buy some. Amen. So uh, uh, this one here, though, is, is probably it's really, really accurate and, and it updates itself quite frequently. So I, I don't get too lost with it. But but, you know, I can put in a, a, a it's pretty neat. I can put in an address somewhere I've never even heard of. And there's lots of places around here I ain't never heard of. <laughs> Amen. So I could put in this place I've never heard of. And here, here a while back I was out on County Road so-and-so in Roscoe, Texas. Well, Roscoe's the other side of Sweetwater. I don't know if you know that or not. But this place was nowhere near Roscoe, Texas. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was just the address they had on it. Hey Amen. It's crazy thing about the bug me to death. I gotta figure out something different on that. I may have a title on my ear with a rubber band or paper clip or something. <laughs> but this crazy thing, I, it took me to Roscoe and then it carried me out the other side of Roscoe. And I thought, man, it's really goofing up. It carried me probably nearly almost to Lorraine, if you know where Lorraine is. And I got nearly to Lorraine and then it turns me on this little county road and I go and I go and I go and all I see on both sides is fields and windmills. That ain't a tree. There, there's a little bit of tumbleweed blowing across and that's about it. The only moving thing out there beside me. And I'm driving and driving and driving and driving and all of a sudden it tells me take the next left. And I take the next left and I drive and drive and drive and I think Lord I am loster than a goose. I will never find my way out of this place. And so the guy, I called the guy and I said, I'm on this county road. He said, you're on the right road. He said, uh, actually about four or five more miles up here and you'll see a white gate on the left. Well, I pulled up, sure enough, there's a white gate on the left and he carried me through the gate and we went another mile and a half back through the field over to his house. Amen, and way back out in there. But when I started to leave, Brother Condi, I thought, Lord, I'll never get out of here. I don't know how in the world I got in here in the first place. And so I pushed that button on that GPS and it said, where do you want to go? There's a little symbol on there that looks like a house and underneath of it, it says home. Woo. Hallelujah. Now I'm lost. I don't have a clue where I'm at. And I pushed the home button. Boom. Woo. I started following directions. And it wasn't very long till I began to get into familiar territory. Hallelujah. Oh, it was turning me out of Ty, Texas, up there onto that little business loop. Amen. Going into Abilene, and I knew I was home. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It doesn't make any difference how lost you are. Amen. There is directions home. Hallelujah. And God has got the directions tonight. He wants to make sure that you find. a place called heaven. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. That's my goal. Isn't that your goal? Yes, sir. Amen. That's my goal tonight. I want to make heaven. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to stay in this world. This world is not my home. That's right. Oh, those poor folks that say, well, you know, well, you're, you're like a dog. When you die, that's it. They're going to bury you. You're going to rot. That's hogwash. <laughs> If that's the case, why well, my dad, who was all shriveled up, couldn't lift his arms at all. You couldn't stretch his arms out without him screaming, why? On his death date. Hallelujah. We're standing in the room with him, and he's watching this corner. He looks at this corner, and all of a sudden, he just kind of leans over and raises them arms up toward that corner and took his last breath. Why? You know why? Because he saw the home that he had been working for. He saw the home. Hallelujah. He had denied himself of this world. He didn't have very much of this world's goods, but you know what? He had a mansion already prepared. Hallelujah. There was a place already ready for him. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. God wants to build a place for you, but you've got to make yourself ready. You know why the Bible said he's coming after a people that have made themselves ready? Because nobody can make you ready but you. Amen. You're the only one who can make you ready. Yeah. Well, how am I going to make myself ready? Well, what I just could be preaching to you for 30 minutes. Have you been listening? Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Deny yourself. 
Coca-Cola. I like Coca-Cola way too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how to get rid of sweets. Anybody here a sweet I was a sweet holic, been a sweet holic on the line. Amen. Let me tell you how to get rid of it. Go on a 21 day fast, a total 21 day fast. Drinking just water and, and unsweetened fruit juice. At the end of it, the first week of Dr. Pepper you take will nearly knock your socks off. And I promise you, Ben. It is absolutely the nastiest stuff to drink. And now here I am drinking it again. Because I'm going to do another three one day fast get off of that mess. But I don't want to be attached to this world. I don't want the flavors of this world, the smells of this world, the sights of this world. I, I don't need to be attached to the things of this world. Why? Because we're only passing through here. This is only a dressing room, amen, for where we're really going. Hallelujah. This is only a stopping place. It's only a rest area. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Andrew will tell you, I remember back several years ago, uh, he's just a teenager, and I guess we all were there at one time. And uh, he he got a job. I got a job with uh, uh, the Lowe's in Sulphur Springs, Texas, and I was driving back and forth to the store. And he got a job over in Mount Vernon, Texas, working in the RDC, the Regional Distribution Center. Very good job. Very good place to work. And and uh, he went he wanted to buy a new car, so we went out and helped him. He bought a new car and. Uh, he's all happy about that new car, and one one morning I, I I looked and he wasn't in his room, and I freaked out. I was like, "Oh, where's Andrew at?" I didn't know. And uh, walked outside, and he was laid back in that car, sound <laughs> asleep. He what, what had happened was he had got. He's, he's always been one of these guys that stays up half the night. Yeah. I work night shift. He worked night shift and lived night shift when he didn't work night shift. <laughs> and so he was a night owl. And, and, but the problem was he, he was wore out. Amen. Uh, he, he wasn't used to that kind of stuff and they, they worked him down. And so he'd come home. He would come home. And sometimes he said, I would get so sleepy on the way home that I would just find a place to pull over and take a little nap. Ever do that? Mm -hmm. I do that every now and then. I, mean, I was out here just a while back. I had to go to Eastland. and I, I was coming back from Eastland, and I, I had been just one of them weeks. I had been just one, one thing after another. I wasn't getting much rest. And so I'm coming back from Eastland. And I, I guess old people, when we get to this part of our lives, we need a rocking chair about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> our recline would be better. Amen, but I didn't have it. And I'm driving, trying to get home, you know. And all of a sudden, man, I just got so sleepy. And I, I was doing good till I hit them little bumps on the side of the road. And was, brrr, <laughs> them was Driscoll bumps. They put them there for me. And so I, I, I come awake and I said, you know what? I better pull over or I'm basically run over somebody. And so I knew up ahead just a few more miles was a rest stop. And so I pulled into that rest stop, Brother Condi, and I kicked my seat back. Yeah, I'm on the clock. That's all right, because I'm on the clock most of the time anyway with the people. So I pulled my seat back, and I, I mean, as soon as it got tilted back, I was sound asleep. I slept about 10 minutes, and all of a sudden I woke up, and I was wide awake. I was good to go. But there was a rest stop there. Hallelujah. And all that rest stop did was give me strength to go on. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You, you got to understand this world is really not our home. That rest stop is not where I lived. It was only a place to stop to, to, to get where I was going. Hallelujah. It, it was a place where I could get revitalized and, and get re-energized and, and head home. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Somebody needs to understand this world is really not your home. Amen. And God wants you to re revitalize and re-energize while you're here. He wants you to get yourself ready. Amen. So, what? Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall say, I don't want to be lost. I want to be saved. 
Amen. The only way I'm going to be saved, though, is to die. Why did Paul say it this way? For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. Hallelujah. What's he talking about for me to die? Physical death is gain? No, not necessarily. He's talking about for me to die out right here. Uh, and the only way you're going to ever gain anything in the spirit realm is to die out to the things around you, to die out to the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you don't die out to the flesh, guess what? You're going to live in the flesh. And if you live in the flesh, then you can't walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the Word of God says, doesn't it? If I'm going to walk in the spirit, I've got to deny the flesh. Because those two just will not blend. Hallelujah. I cannot be a carnal-minded saint and never get one inch toward God. I've got to make up my mind. I'm going to do this right. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Hallelujah. I'm going to do this right, God. I, I, I made up my mind. I'm giving up the world. I'm giving up the desires of the world. Lord, I, I, I don't want any more of that hooch. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I'm not interested in any more of that stuff. Amen. I never did like you in the back in the first place. Thank you. Amen. That's the nasty stuff. But you understand, it's not the things that I didn't want to give up. It's the things that I did give up. Hallelujah. Oh, it's the fact that I made up my mind that back when I was a teenager, this world really hadn't got anything. Oh, I know there's been times over my lifespan that, that I, I thought about different things, and I wonder why in the world did I, would I even think about doing something like that. Amen. Because I understand the consequences of it. But I also understand that living for God is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Hallelujah. Uh, I, need to, I need somebody to understand here tonight uh, that the best thing that will ever happen to you is the day that you surrender it all to Him. It's the day when you make up your mind. God, you're more important than my family. You're more important than my car, than my house, than my job. You're more important than anything I possess. God. And without you, I wouldn't have it anyway. Hallelujah. Uh, that's why the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things are added unto. Hallelujah. God, God wants you to have a good job. I, I'm not saying that. He does. He wants you to have a good job. He just wants you to put him first. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he, you know, he, he wants you to, to do the right thing. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got a pretty decent job now, but you know what? In the morning, the very first thing I do is get up and spend an hour with him. Hallelujah. Before I even crack a, a book to begin to work for the day, the very first thing I do is read my word and pray and have an hour with him. Hallelujah. Before I ever do anything else. You know why? Because he's the one that's given me everything I've got. He's the one that's taking care of my situation. He is the master. Hallelujah. I said, he's the master of every situation. He knows. He knows where I'm at. He knows where I'll be tomorrow. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my. He knows what my situation is. And he's in control of it. Amen. But you know why he's in control of my situation? Because I relinquished it to him and let him be God in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. So... So when we're when we're when we're reading this, Amen. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. We've got to deny ourselves of the things of the world that we seek after, and seek after Him. Let me explain something, y'all. Okay, this is plain old common English. You begin to seek after Him. You begin to forget the things of the world. Forget pursuing that house, forget pursuing that car, forget pursuing that job, and just begin to pursue him. I promise you, he'll give you that job, he'll give you that house, he'll give you that car. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you pursue him, he will take care of that other stuff. Right. That's his word. He keeps his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. The rest of this scripture said, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? If you gain everything that there is